Hey YouTube, what's up? Dr. T here. And uh, this is the second part of coding in Tkinter, enabling you to move an object on the screen. In my case, in this case, it's moving an agent in a grid from left to right. And last time, this is where I left you off, and we'll briefly go through it again. And there's one thing I want to refresh with you as well. So we have our little grid up here. Um, I wanted to go and show you again the features um, under the canvas um, item. Now, I don't know how you use all of these, but these are all the features that come with Canvas. Um, we're using Move, uh, we're using Rectangle, and Polygon, and now you do multi-sided entities. We'll use Chords, we'll use Oval, and we'll use Line, and Main Loop. I think that covers most of what we're kind of covering. Just want to refresh you on that. So without further ado, I hope this thing goes all right. So let's put our grid in. Okay, that's the framework on which we're going to be working. And we're going to surround it by a nice line, make it look pretty. <laughs> make it look pretty. So we put a, oh, we don't want that in there just yet. So have we got all of them? This one off. So now you've got a line around there. <coughs> and now we're going to put the dividers in. So that will create our grid. Now we've got our dividers in. Now we're going to put the terminal point in, which is going to be red. It's going to mask the white line that was already there. What what happened there? Oh, I didn't. I didn't take it out. I took the wrong thing out. See, it's what happens when you're trying to teach anything. Things go wrong. Now, so we put our red in there. Uh, we now need to put a line around it. Again, line around it again, and we'll put our agent in, which is our oval, and that's our starting point. Now, the one other thing I wanted to add to this, which was not in the other code, is if you want to make these lines thicker, then we just add this width onto the side of whatever you want to do, and um, you can do whatever you want. Make things nice and now it's overlapped it here. So you have to fiddle around with it, i.e. the placement of it. So in order for that to not happen, uh, we would have to put the red line in first and then the white line on top of it. So if you wanted to do that, you'd have to make sure that you put your red in first and then your white line on top of it. I'm not going to do that because it'll be a real mess. Um, so we'll move on to the the real start of this part of it uh, next. So when we've moved the agent and it's gone back until it's tripping around and it reaches this point, the goal, we want to reset it. So we need a reset function in, so you can call it what you want, it's called reset. The time step you can put in anywhere. Uh, it comes in with the coordinates of where it was here, so you want to delete the coordinates. Then you want to put in the canvas of uh, code for the agent again, and then update the canvas. And we'll get it reset. If you don't update the canvas, it won't work. So I've put the rest of the code in, and this is going to be referenced up on my GitHub, so you'll just, just be able to go along and pick it up after there. Now, we're coming into, uh, wonderful, I'll have to move all this lot over. 
Okay, I've corrected that. Now, we're coming into a different function definition, and we're going to be running the code from there. So we will be switching off this main loop feature here, and we'll be putting the main loop at the bottom down here. And we'll also be shutting off the run from the grid world, the grid world, the grid, to running off the um, the def, the agent move def. And although I haven't alluded to it, I'm working with um, PyCharm, which is the IDE I'm using. There are others, but uh, this is a pretty good standard one. So um, there are a number of things here. One feature that I want to get to, which is about the move, so let's deal with that first. This is the line that moves the agent. It takes the agent's coordinates in, which are these, and it vectors it. We, we have, we're going to use this vector, uh, numpy move vector, to change the coordinates or the um, on the canvas oval and it vectors them in. The first one goes into the x, x dimension and the second one goes into the y dimension. Um, and I wanted to show you that separately uh, in code because it's done within the library. To do it in code, you'd have to do it differently. So we have another vector. So we have, say we've got a rectangle at 1, 1 and 10, 10, and we want to move it to the right. So x would become 10, y would still be 1, and x would be, the bottom top part of it would be 10, and the bottom part would be 19, and y would stay the same. So in order to be able to get, understand what this thing's doing, I wanted to code it out in regular code. So it will take the, the, the actual code from the canvas, takes the code from the agent, and it moves these vector wires into that code. Now to do that in code, uh, we'll be using this uh, numpy array as the vector we're moving in. We just have to build it. So in the first place, we're going to put in the one, and we're going to add nine to it. Then in the second place, we're going to put in the one, and we're going to add zero to it, which is here. In the third place, we're going to put in the 10, and we're going to add a nine to it, and so on down here. So that is actually what you'd have to code if you wanted to do this outside of the library. Where are we? So now we've got our 10, 1, 19, 10, which is what we want to get. So that's the coding equivalent of what this does. And I want to go through that just so you can actually see what this manipulation is doing, because you can't really see it other than the numbers are here, the numbers are there. So, okay. Uh, there's another thing I'll mention that I do, and it's good practice, which I haven't always done, and that is never really code off your master. Um, this is what we're going to be getting to at the end of the show. The agent will move around quite nicely and it'll eventually come to a terminal point and it'll go and stop, we're going to get there and it'll stop. Uh, that's what we're going to get to. But you never really want to code off your master. I'll start coding in the master and then when there's an error, I'll move into the development file. And then when there's an error in the development file, I'll move into a helper file and then transfer across. I've lost so much stuff. Uh, and your, your master is like, an, is like a painting. It's like a piece of art. You can, it can take you hours to do it. And if you lose it, it's gone. You've got to start all over again. If you came back and wanted to do this all over again, it would be quite a zoo trying to get it unless you're a real good coder. And I'm just an amateur kind of hobbyist. Um, so let's move on to the next section, which is the move. We need to bring in the data from the grid. So we self-grid, that brings in the data. We need to update the canvas. 
and we'll put a timestamp in there. You can put these wherever you want and change it to whatever you want. Now, <clears throat> we're going to move the agent randomly. And when it reaches its goal, we're going to reset it. So <clears throat> we have a loop, set it to whatever you want. We need to use the coordinates because we're going to mo modify them. So we'll call this S will be the coordinates. So I showed you this earlier. This is how you get the coordinates out of there. Um, and we're going to move the agent. So we're going to use random choice, which means alternately or on a random basis, it'll pick one or the other. If you had right, up, down, left and right, then it would pick those. So the, the, we're moving these to the right. So what we're going to do is into the right, we're going to add an ordinate to the agent's coordinates here. And when we move to the left, we're going to subtract it. So this is our vector for doing that. And uh, I've put some other stuff in here, which we'll run through when I run this code, to show what happens when it doesn't move left. It just stays where it is. So this will be the same in both of these. I think we can look at these both at the same time. So you've got, you've got your vector in here, and you've got your vector in here. And you can put this time, time step wherever you want. So we're going to move the agent, and the code for moving the agent is self canvas dot move you put the agent in which is the data specifying your agent and then you put in the coordinate to move it here so we've got move right coordinate zero so move right coordinate zero is 46 now that operates as I said before on the left on the x you've got x y x y so it changes the two x movements by 46 plus and the y coordinate in this case is zero because we don't want to move that. Uh, then we need to get the new coordinates back from this function and then update the canvas. And then we'll put a similar a similar module in for the right. So we are, I'm going to ask it if you want to move left, we'll put in if move equals left. Now if it doesn't, we don't want it to move into the wall. So when it's moved to the right, its coordinates in the first position here will be higher than 15. In which case, if we move it to the left, it's fine. So we specify it will only move to the left if the coordinates are greater than 15. Otherwise, it won't do anything. It'll just flip back, go back around the loop. So we're going to tell it to tell us what's happening. And I'll run the code so we can see what's happening. So here, if if it doesn't if if it's in the in the first position that's the coordinate there's 15 i want it to tell us it's just going to bounce off the wall so you can see it happening and and then if it's moving right i'm going to say ask it to move right and tell us what the coordinates are now when it gets down to our terminal point we will want to reset it and the coordinates for the terminal point are 153. That's the 153 in this position. So we'll say if S0 is 153, we're going to reset it, which is going to spring us out into the reset function. And we're going to break out of the loop, which will terminate the code. We don't want it continuing on all over the place. And there's another reset out here. Yo, whether that is necessary or not, we'll find out. So here we go. Hope for the best. And let's move this up a little bit because we're going to have a, a lot of data down here. I might run it a few times just to see if we can get it to bounce off the wall a few times. So it throws up a tizzy fit. Now, why are you throwing up a tizzy fit? Short walk has no absolute move agent. Let me have a look at this. OK, I'm back. There was nothing wrong with the code. It's just that this PyCharm will occasionally throw up stuff 
just close it, reboot it, and it resets itself because sometimes it just pulls all this kind of nonsense. So we'll run it and we'll see if we can get it to bounce off the wall. There we go, bouncy, 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 tons of bounces, tons of bounces, and it finally moves up and it gets to its destination. So let's just go over what it did. Bounced off the wall, moved left, moved right, get it right, moved left, bounced off the wall, moved right, moved left, bounced off the wall, and so on and so forth. Then it moved right and moved right and moved right, and it reached our final position in the goal and when it did that we kicked in this function and it went back so I'm running again and first time I was just looking at the bouncing off the wall you can just look at the at the, at the little diagram so it's moving moving it hits its goal and it sets it sets itself back so I think that's pretty much it for the explanation of how to deal with this. Uh, if I've missed anything out, you can send me a note. Anything you don't understand, send me a note. And um, hope you find this useful. If you do, please give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. And the the uh, references to this code will be in it will be below the below the vid. Take care, YouTube.